Two weeks ago, Sky's Kay Burley tried to concoct a row about David Lammy speaking at an event with Hassam Zomlot, the Palestinian ambassador to the UK. What about your opposite number, David Lammy, sharing a platform uh, with the uh, Palestinian um, ambassador who um, basically said the Israelis had it coming? Will the Shadow Foreign Secretary sit with the Palestinian ambassador appearing with him um, at an event um, given that the Palestinian ambassador basically said um, the last couple of days that Israel had it coming. Is it appropriate that the shadow foreign secretary sits with a man who said what he said? This is a, an atrocious comment by the uh, Palestinian ambassador to the UK. Where are we with the foreign secretary, the shadow foreign secretary at the moment, um, sharing a stage with a man who has said uh, Israel had it coming? Now, there was a problem with that line of questioning. Hassam Zoblot has never said Israel had it coming with reference to the 7th of October attacks. Instead, he said this. What is tragic is the blindness and deafness of the world and the international community for so many years over the warnings we have been saying that this was coming. Israel knew that this was coming their way. Now, that is completely different from what Kay Burley said. She said Zoblot said Israel had it coming, which means Israel deserved those attacks. Zomlot is instead saying the Palestinian Liberation Organization have been warning that if the situation in Gaza didn't improve, something like this could happen. Elsewhere in the interview, we called it tragic, of course. Um, they are completely different statements. Yet when I pointed that out on Twitter, Kay Burley was, let's say, dismissive. So I tweeted, this is really terrible journalism from Kay Burley and reminiscent of a playground shit stirrer. You can't just make up provocative quotes and then demand others respond to them, which is what she did. Kay Burley said, don't message me, Michael. I have no interest in anything you have to say. So Kay Burley might not have cared about lying on air, but it seems her bosses or perhaps Sky's lawyers disagreed. Sky issued this on air statement this weekend. Now, on Sky News Breakfast early this month, we reported that the Palestinian ambassador to the UK, Dr. Hussam Zomlot, said in reference to the Hamas attacks on Israel on the 7th of October that Israel had it coming. We recognise that this was not what Dr. Zomlot had said in an earlier interview. Sky News also accepts that this gave a potentially misleading representation of Dr. Zomlot's views. It sounds like a lawyer's statement, doesn't it? And as far as I know, Kay Burley hasn't said anything personally, and there has been no apology. And I would hazard to say um, that that apology there had less prominence than Kay Burley putting the false claim to various top-level politicians. Ash, I don't think this is good enough, do you? No, it's, it's absolutely not good enough. Because what Kay Burley did was first, she misrepresented what Hassan Zomlot has said and delivered it as a misleading paraphrase. Oh, well, he basically said Israel had it coming. And then you could see her working herself up into a lather across subsequent interviews saying, well, this is a, disgustive co a disgusting comment from uh, the Palestinian ambassador who said Israel had it coming. And that is just an out and out fabricated quote. Now, if you fabricate a quote from somebody. And in particular, if you fabricate a quote from the head of the Palestinian mission at a time where Israel is at war with a section of the Palestinian population, you should be held to account for that. Now, at the very least, what that would mean is that I think Kay Burley should be the one to issue the retraction and Kay Burley should be the one to apologize. But I actually think if you are a senior journalist and you are making up a quote, you make up a quote and you behave with an outrageous level of contempt and hostility towards people who are calling you out, I think your job should be on the line. This is just out and out journalistic um, malpractice. And to put it in a different way, if a BBC journalist fabricated a quote from the Israeli ambassador, do you think they'd still have their job? Absolutely not. The fact that they have they just think that on air, it's not even an apology, it's an on-air clarification. Like, uh, two weeks later, 